My name is Shirley Francis. I'm the manager of the Bailey Clocks Museum here in Spillville, Iowa. All the clocks you see in this room this, were carved by two bachelor farmers. They lived on a farm about four and a half miles north of town and they carved these clocks in the wintertime when the snow was flying and they didn't have much else to do. They started in 1913 when they were about 30 years old. They started because they had a neighbor who had carved the clock, but the neighbor did not know how to put the mechanical parts of the clock together, so they took it to the Bealey brothers, and when they saw this hand-carved clock that their neighbor did, they thought to themselves, well, this looks interesting, so they decided they were going to start. So they ordered a pattern from a catalog and started, and they started with a creation clock. It's a very uh, it's a smaller clock, but their hobby just kept growing until they got to be nine feet, 10 inches tall. Uh, many of the clocks have a music box in them, so they play music or have figurines that, that move on the clock. This is the history of travel clock, and it depicts the various means of transportation that there were in those days. This was carved in 1941 and 42. So we have the first two levels are traveled by water. The next three levels are traveled by land. The top level is travel by air, and you see the music band playing here, moving their instruments, they're walking on land. Way up at the top, we have the eagle, and that represented to them a sure and swift flight. There are many other clocks, and they all depicted various means, various uh, themes in, in history. They were avid readers. They only had a fifth grade ed education. They went to country school, so fifth grade was the highest level that they went to, so that really completed their formal education. But they were very widely read. They read three daily newspapers. They read any book they could get their hands on. So that's where they got many of their ideas. Their oldest brother, the oldest of the two, was, uh, was um, um, Joseph, and actually he uh, was the designer. He thought up the theme of the clock, and. Many times when he was thinking of a clock, Frank was already just working on the previous clock. So, but they did work together, but Frank was the major carver and Joseph was the designer, the planner of the clocks, and then the joiner of the woods. This building is also famous because this is the building that housed Anton Dvorak, the famous Czech music composer. He came to Spillville, Iowa in 1893 and he came and he stayed in this building. So this building, we have the, uh, the Anton Dvorak exhibit upstairs, and many people from all over the world come because they want to see where Anton Dvorak did live when he came to the United States. Many people wonder, well, how did he find this little tiny town, or why did he come to Spillville, Iowa? Well, it's because uh, this was a Czech community. Everyone spoke Czech here. He was commissioned to teach at the Conservatory of Music in New York City and he traveled with an American he had met in Prague in 1892. And he asked this gentleman, well, you're an American, you're from the United States, will you travel with me back to the United States? So he hired this individual. Well, this individual actually happened to grow up in, in Spillville, Iowa. So when they were in New York City, in the summer, he didn't have time to go back to, Anton Dvorak didn't have time to go back to Europe to visit his family. Anton Dvorak wrote some of his music in this tiny town. He walked the, the Turkey River here in town. That's where he got some of his inspiration for his music. He went to our local St. Wenceslaus Catholic Church. He played the organ every day for daily mass. So. Um, like I say, you know, we have many musicians come from all over the world. Many people from the Czech Republic come because they want to see where Anton Dvorak did live in this building. The Bealey Brothers purchased this building in 19, around 1946 to move their clocks. And they purchased it because this was, building was important to the community, to the town, because this is where Anton Dvorak did live. The museum started on the farm uh, shortly after they were carving the clocks in 1913. Many people would stop by the farm to look at the clocks, and that's how the museum started, well, just by word of mouth. Let's go see what the Bealey brothers are up to. So that's how it started. Then they started charging admission on the, on the farm. They charged 10 cents a person on the farm. But when the Bealey brothers got older, they decided they had to sell the farm, 
and then bought this building to move all their clocks into Spillville. They were always going to leave the museum to their sister Anna. They had a younger sister Anna. She never married, like the Beely brothers, they never married. They didn't have anyone to leave the, the clocks to. So what they did do, they put it in their will upon their death, the clocks in the building would become the property of, the, of Spillville. You see, Anna passed away in 1943. They were always going to leave it to her so she would have some money to live off of. But when she passed away, they thought, well, we don't know what we're going to do with our things. They, all, they actually thought about burning some of their, all their things. They did burn all the designs, the, the paperwork, to design the clocks. But someone said, well, you're moving all the clocks to town, just leave them to the city. So that's what they did. They put it in their will, like I said, upon their death, the clocks in the building would become the property of Spillable. We do have a website, it's called beelyclocks.org, where we also have an email, beelyclocks at mchsi.com. Our phone number is 563-562-3569. We welcome anyone to come and visit us. And we are located in Spillville, Iowa. Spillville is a little tiny town about 12, 13 miles south of Decorah, Iowa. And we hope to see everyone come and see us. And thank you for, for listening. Oh, here they come. That's so neat. You have to open the door to open it. Henry Ford decided, Henry Ford liked, um, he liked music boxes and clocks, so he had heard about the Music Clocks Museum. So he decided to travel to Iowa, go come here to spill the light, go to the farm where the museum still was, when he saw this particular clock, he decided he had to have it. So he offered the brothers a million dollars for this clock. Well, a million dollars didn't mean much to the Beely brothers. They said, well, we have everything we need. You know, we don't want, you know, we don't need anything else. And so a million dollars didn't mean much to Henry Ford. He had plenty of money. Well, a million dollars didn't mean anything to the Beely brothers either. They said, we have no use for this. For, for money, we have everything we need, we are not going to start making clocks for people. So they told Henry Ford, no thank you. So we have the clock here to display.